Tool has always been known as an odd band, okay? From their lyricism to their strange time signatures, Tool has never really been your mother's favorite band. The lyrics are hard to understand, and you can't really wiggle your finger to any of their songs, but they have truly written some of the most profound songs I've ever heard in my life. Today we're going to dive into the Tool Iceberg, okay? If you're unfamiliar with the Iceberg, it's pretty much just trivia facts listed from most known to least known. Looking at this blind, it really it makes almost no sense, so I'm here to break it down for you. Without further ado, let's hop into the first layer. First, I'd like to introduce you to our main cast. Names you need to know going into this. Maynard James Keenan is our front man and lead singer. Danny Carey is our drummer. Justin Chancellor is the bassist. And Adam Jones is the guitarist. That's all you need to know. Enjoy the video. Paul D'Amour was the original bassist for Tool before he was replaced after Undertow's release, which was their first album, and before Animas released their second album in 1995 by Justin Chancellor, who is the bassist today. Uh, he left simply because he just he wanted to play the guitar. He was done with the bass. Nothing wacky. Just a mutual departure. The Gaping Lotus Experience is a bonus track on Tool's first EP, Opiate. It comes right at the end of the record and has some, some really strange lyrics. Uh, to be honest, you're not really missing too much by not listening to this song, but... If you want, give it a listen. Uh, the track actually isn't on Spotify or Apple Music, but it's easy to find on YouTube. 72826 is a Tool demo tape released in 1991, a year before Opiate's release. It was an incredibly limited release with less than 2,000 copies existing today, but every song here was later released on a future album, uh, with four of the six releasing on Opiate the next year and then the rest releasing on Undertow two years later. The tape was named 72826 because it spells out Satan if it's dialed on one of those old-ass phones. Salival is a live album released in the year 2000 that consists of Third Eye, Part of Me, and Push It as the live songs played, with Message to Harry Manback being on the CD as the studio version. Uh, they also cover No Quarter by Led Zeppelin and You Lie by Peach. There's actually also a hidden song on this album called Maynard's Dick that plays 25 seconds after the end of the album as a little bonus track. Uh, which wasn't too crazy for the time. A lot of albums were doing that. Nothing, again, nothing too strange here. But it's it's another album that isn't listened on Spotify or Apple Music. Again, easy to find on YouTube and a great listen. Ambient Tracks is a reference to the song Intention on 10,000 Days, as well as Virginity Trace, also on 10,000 Days. It's really just, sometimes Tool albums just break into ambient noise for a song. Pussifer is another band where the Tool frontman Maynard James Keenan performs. Uh, I gave them a listen. I wasn't a huge fan, but give it a listen to yourself. The 13-year hiatus took place between the album's 10,000 Days, released in 2006, and Fear Inoculum, released in 2019. Uh, the gap was supposedly caused by the band's fear of releasing a mediocre album after being such a revered band. It was supposedly nearly ready to release eight years prior to its actual release date, which really makes a question, what changed in those eight years? Caduceus, could 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 Caduceus... Cudicius Sellers is a winery owned by Maynard James Keenan. There's a cool documentary called Blood into Wine if you're more interested, but it doesn't really have too much to do with the band tool itself, so that's all I'm going to go into. <music> Disposition, Reflection, and Triad, often referred to as the Holy Trinity, was originally actually intended to be one singular song that would be 22 minutes long. Uh, they've never revealed really why they split the songs up themselves, but it's it's assumed that it's because the record label thought that the song was too long. I mean, 22 minutes is, is a fucking long song. Or because it wouldn't fit onto like a vinyl disc, which makes a lot of sense. The Witness is an instrumental song released by Adam Jones, who's, who is Tool's guitarist. Uh, the song also features Danny Carey on drums and Justin Chancellor on bass, who are also members of the Tool band. A Perfect Circle is another one of Maynard James Keenan's bands, but a bit more mainstream than Pussifer, I would say. A little bit easier to listen to. You can show this one to your father. This band is your more traditional rock, so if that's your thing, give them a listen. I, I like this one quite a bit. The song Die Eier von Satan is a song completely in German on the album Anima. Uh, the song's lyrics, which perhaps sound a little satanic, are actually just a sugar cookie recipe. Uh, upon further research, I can confirm the cookies are in fact edible. Mantra is a song from the album Lateralis that has no lyrics or instruments, um, if you can even call it a song. The song is just a weird moaning noise that was revealed to be Maynard uh, gently squeezing one of his cats and then slowing the audio down. The Holy Gift is surprisingly high up on this iceberg considering how complex I find it. Uh, this video would double in length if I tried to explain it in depth, but on a surface level, The Holy Gift is the album Lateralis arranged in a different order. Uh, the order is supposedly alluded to on the title track, Lateralis, where uh, every syllable on that song is in the Fibonacci sequence, which is a mathematical spiral. 
that you can see on screen. Uh, this led people to rearrange the song in the order of the Fibonacci sequence, which led to the, the Holy Gift's creation. Now, there's a couple of variations, and if you really want to look into it more, I'll leave a link to a 30-page a 30, a 30 document in the description that goes over it in depth. Uh, perhaps too much depth, but you can give that a read if you want. Know Your Enemy is a song on Rage Against the Machine's self-titled album, and Maynard James Keenan featured on this song. That's about it, nothing too crazy. The Hush video is one of Tool's rarer music videos. I, I had never even seen it until this video. Uh, and the video features the actual band members, which if you've seen any of the other Tool music videos, you know, is fairly uncommon. Prison Sex is one of the bolder titled songs by any band ever, I would say. Uh, the song is on a surface level in incredibly dark, and if I were to delve into the lyrics themselves, uh, I'd think the video would get taken down. But Maynard is quoted, The song is about recognizing, identifying the cycle of abuse within yourself. That's the first step of the process. Realization. Identifying. The next step is to work through it. But this song is about the first step in the process, which is recognizing. Way more uplifting than the lyrics sound, but now you know. H is a song off the album Anima that is speculated to be about Maynard's son, Devo. Devo? I don't know. The song seemingly describes Maynard becoming a father and, and becoming a new person for the, the new life that he's now responsible for. And H also happens to be his son's middle name. So, weird fucking middle name, what are you gonna do? Lacrimology is a pseudo-philosophy created by Tool as a joke. Uh, it means the study of crying, which the band members claim they discovered in a book called A Joyful Guide to Lacrimology by Ronald P. Vincent. Uh, there's actually no evidence that this book ever existed, and is, is believed to pretty much be a joke by the band members. I mean, unless the book's really out there. I'm still looking. I don't think it's been very well documented, but when you first got the band together, there was a particular book that inspired you about the study of human pain. Could you tell us a little bit about that? It's a book written in late 40s by a guy named Ronald P. Vincent. And uh, the best active explanation I could give is just what you what you hear on the records. You know, it's that's kind of like a an example. You know, a practical application of those kind of principles. Ten Thousand Days is the title of Tool's fourth studio album and a song on the album. When Maynard was young, his mother Judith Marie suffered an aneurysm and stroke that left her paralyzed for life. And around 10,000 days later, uh, she passed away. In 1997, Tool was sued by Volcano Records for a, a breach of contract, and then they ended up countersuing and settled out of court, where the band was signed for three more albums, which actually ended with Fear Inoculum's release in 2019. This is also another reason why the band wasn't on streaming services for so long, and why you couldn't find them on Spotify or Apple Music. 46 and 2 from the album Anima was actually used in the Captain America The First Avenger trailer. It's just a cool little thing you wouldn't really expect, as Tool doesn't seem like a, a band you'd hear in, in a Marvel movie trailer. But nothing too deep about it. When Undertow was first released, the album was almost immediately removed off of the shelves of Walmart and Best Buy and places like that. Uh, because when upon opening the CD case and removing the disc, you would see an incredibly vulgar image uh, underneath the disc. The album was then re-released with a new cover and with a note inside that allowed you to send in a letter to the band and receive the intended album art in exchange for the one you got. It's a cool little thing they did to try to avoid censorship, but not too memorable. Disgustipated is a song at the end of Undertow that features quite an off-putting message at the end of the track. It's really an eerie track, but it ends with a voicemail left by Maynard's landlord. He doesn't say it's anything too profound, but weird thing to do. In one of their shows, the song Prison Sex was actually extended by an extra verse. I'll link it in the description if you want to hear it, but the lyrics really add to the already unfathomably dark tone of the song. And they were removed for a reason, so do with that what you will. When Undertow was released in exclusively North America, the CD actually contained 69 tracks. Songs 10 through 68 are complete silence for one second each, with song 69 resuming the album, with the final song being discussed to Payton, which we just mentioned. Adam Jones, Tool's guitarist, worked in the film industry for a short time, and... He he made some pretty profound movies. He worked in the special effects department and worked on the set of Jurassic Park, the Terminator sequel, and Edward Scissorhands. His film career ended in 1996, but he helped make a couple of classic movies. I couldn't find any unused lines, but I, I did find two alternate monologues at the end of the song. So if you've listened to it, towards the end of the song, Henry Rollins delivers an absolutely phenomenal monologue that really brings the song to new heights, I feel. 
There's actually two alternate versions of this monologue, one performed by Zach De La Roche, the lead singer of Rage Against the Machine, and the other being performed by Maynard himself. They're easily findable on YouTube if you want to see them, but I, I definitely recommend these. They're super cool to look at. The Human Experiment A.E. is an allegedly cancelled project between Maynard and Robert Fripp, the guitarist for King Crimson. Uh, they released a cover of the song 21st Century Schizoid Man, which is a classic, that can be found on YouTube, but that's, that's all they did. It's believed that they were planning to release an album together under the name The Human Experiment E or whatever the fuck, but it's never been confirmed nor denied. Three Little Pigs is an obscure song written by Green Jelly. I hadn't heard about it until this video, but Maynard and drummer Danny Carey played a concert with them once where they, they played that song. It's on YouTube if you're a fan of the song, but I didn't think it was too crazy. Problem 8 is an incredibly obscure theory that there is actually a hidden tool track that less than 30 people have ever heard. It's been alluded to exist by a man named Blair, who's a, a good friend of drummer Danny Carey and has been on the tool message boards a little bit here and there. It's rumored to have been created around the same time as the album Anima, but it was just never widespread. Adam Jones, the guitarist, later confirmed that the song actually doesn't exist, but there was a long time where people were searching for this song everywhere. Serge Tankion, known for being the lead singer of System of a Down, actually came on as a guest at a tool show to perform sober, and it was, it was pretty damn good. Whoops, I already went over the Zach De La Roche bottom verse, but again, check that shit out. It's super cool. Divorced is a song Tool featured on with another band called Melvins. They're seen as a kind of a sort of spiritual successor to Tool with high praise from Danny Carey. I think it's a great song. It's only on YouTube. No streaming services for this one, but check it out. Planned Videos references the many scrap Tool videos that never released. I mean, there was supposedly a DVD in the works for the entire Lateralis album which I imagine would have featured videos for the songs that didn't get one, like The Grudge and Lateralis and the rest of those. There was also a planned video for The Pot, but I'll get into that a bit later. Bill Hicks was a comedian that passed away in 1994 and a good friend of Maynard in the band. In 1996, on the album Anima, and more specifically on the song Third Eye, a Bill Hicks monologue is played at the very beginning of the song. Resolution is a bit of a complex one. Uh, some people believe it's the name of that 22-minute long song I mentioned earlier that consisted of Disposition, Reflection, and Triad all combined into one song. And some people also think that Resolution was simply an alternative title to the song Reflection Alone. The latter is the case, and it adds a way darker tone to that song, I think. Because in the widespread interpretation, a lot of that song is, is about suicide. And if it was originally titled Resolution, that's, that's super dark. Never Breathe What You Can't See is an album made by Jello Biafra and the previously mentioned Melvins. On this album, Adam Jones can be heard playing the guitar on four of the eight songs on the album. If you've heard of the album Fear Inoculum, you might know there's, there's sections of songs that have just no lyrics for upwards of seven minutes, just pure music. Well, while on tour, one of these songs was being played and Maynard brought out a table and chair and began to eat dinner on the stage. It's a pretty funny watch if you haven't seen it. It's not too hard to find on YouTube. Revolution is a song performed by Tool and Rage Against the Machine. Nothing too strange here, just a super hard to find song that not many people have heard of. Tapeworm is another Tool collaboration that never worked out. Uh, this one was a group with Maynard and the Nine Inch Nails members Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, and Danny Lohner. Trent Reznor said in an interview that the project just kind of ended up being mediocre and scrapped, but he said he hasn't ruled out a future collaboration with Maynard. No drama here, just didn't work out. And I thought that the music we were doing in the, under the guise of tapeworm, and it never got that far, it just kind of felt like if you're going to combine Tool and Nine Inch Nails, it has to be 10 out of 10, right? not 7 out of 10, you know? And it felt like it was landing in the 7 range, and I, I kind of put a stop to it. Gay Flutist is in regards to a joke from an old Tool fan page called The Tool Shed. Someone sent in a question asking if any of the band members of Tool were gay, and they responded with only The Flutist. I couldn't find anything regarding a collaboration album here, but I did find a live performance of Opiate with Tool and Lane Staley, the lead singer of Alice in Chains. The pot video is a hard thing to talk about. Uh, the strange part about the pot video is that there never was a pot video, only a fan-made pot video. However, this fan-made video was so loved and cherished by the fans that it was pretty widely considered to be the official video of the song, even if it wasn't produced by the band. The video featured an incredibly eerie animation of a farmer and his troubles through the day. Uh, the video was taken down on YouTube, but 
has since been re-uploaded. If you haven't seen it, definitely check this one out. It's super fitting for the song, and it's super cool video. All right, this one's a bit hard to explain, so bear with me. Uh, the hidden track on 10,000 Days, named by fans as Voltron, is three songs from the album combined, but not like Disposition, Reflection, and Triad. No, no, it's much more complex. The songs Wings for Marie and 10,000 Days are a pairing. They go together. The song Virginity Trace, which is pretty much just ambient noise, when combined with the other two, sound pretty damn good. The theory goes as this. The length of the song 10,000 Days is 11 minutes and 13 seconds long. If you combine the lengths of Wings for Marie and Virginity Trace, you also get 11 minutes and 13 seconds. This led to fans playing both Virginity Trace and Wings for Marie on top of 10,000 Days. Virginity Trace is played first, followed by Wings for Marie, and all of that on top of 10,000 Days. An incredibly complicated listen, but a great one nonetheless. Incredibly hard to find, though. I had to go on Reddit and download some weird fucking Google Drive file. Uh, the song was completely wiped from YouTube when Tool first came to streaming services several years ago, and it's never to be seen again. In 2020, Justin Chancellor revealed he wrote new riffs for a potential new Tool EP that he had reserved especially for Tool. He also revealed he had some collabs in the work, but honestly, I'm, I'm tired of discussing collabs that have fallen through. We can look forward to a new EP based on this interview, though, sometime soon from Tool. I kind of went over this earlier when I mentioned the Lateralis DVD that was never released, but this is a good time to also mention there was a 10,000 Days DVD that also never released. This also probably contained some music videos and some live performances, likely the planned pot video, but it was never released and never will be. When the album Anima was originally released in Europe, for whatever reason, the band created an entirely fictional discography that was included on the insert of the European CDs. They also created 16 fake album covers to go along with their 16 fake songs. Fallen is a song played by 30 Seconds to Mars that was worked on by Maynard James Keenan. Uh, I don't know, really know exactly what he did, but he's credited in the song and helped in some way. Children of the Anachronistic Dynasty is one of the earlier bands we saw Maynard in. The band recorded one demo with a song titled Burn, Burn About Out, which is believed to be an early version of the song Sober from Undertow. Not a very influential band, but it shows the humble beginnings of Maynard and an early version of an incredibly iconic song. The Writing 2 video is a very similar circumstance to that of the pod video I mentioned earlier. There's no official video, but it's a very well-loved fan-made video. This fan-made video, however, is it's just a short film edited down to finish to fit the lyrics. It's a cool watch, but not as haunting or memorable as the fan-made pot video. Bleeder the Silver is a song that features Adam Jones. Uh, that's it. I couldn't find anything interesting here. Fap de Oyad is an incredibly strange song off of Lateralis, if you could even call it that. Uh, it concludes the album with a distorted speech. Hello, Art. Yes. Hi. Um, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um... Well, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, Area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? Uh, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago, and, and <laughs> I, I've kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh, man, I don't know where to start. They're, uh, they're, they're going to... Um, they'll triangulate on this position really, really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone, so give us something quick. Seems way too strange to be a coincidence, but do with that what you will. The original Tool bassist that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Paul D'Amour, left the band at some point in between the releases of Undertow and Anima. Um, there are actually some demos of Anima out there, with Paul D'Amour playing the bass line on several of those tracks, including Stink Fist and Eulogy. <laughs> There was a post on that Toolshed website I previously mentioned that pretty much claimed the band had gotten into a bad accident in Australia. Uh, they were supposedly seriously injured and would have to cancel the rest of their tour. Uh, the post was left with an email signature from aprilfools at accident-australia.com. Uh, not funny, didn't laugh. The man I mentioned earlier to be the lead singer of King Crimson, Robert Fripp, had another collaboration album in the works with Tool's lead bassist Justin Chancellor. I couldn't find too much information on this one, but I'm sure it was at least considered at some point. The song Tempest, which was released in 2019, has a riff that was made in 1995. It was revealed by Justin Chancellor in an interview that the riff was written by Adam Jones before Justin even joined the band. 
1996. Really crazy to think that the riff held up well enough to be released 20 years later, but it goes to show you how talented the band is. Tricky is a fairly well-known British record producer and rapper. Uh, he was also a good friend of Maynard in the band, and perhaps Tool's most obscure music video, that being Parabola. Tricky acts as the protagonist of the video. Uh, I'm sure you've seen him in the video, but it's really cool to see him in such a strange role. Uh, so kudos to him. Tex ANS, or Tex and the Anti-Nazi Squad, is the very first band Maynard ever joined back in 1986 where he played the bass. I didn't even know he could play the bass. Anyway, he later became the band's vocalist and they went on to have an incredibly prolific career. Uh, well, no. The band didn't last too long, but one of the original members released what is believed to be the very first song Maynard ever wrote and sang on. The song is called Who Leads You, and it's a bit cheesy, but it's cool to where, see where he started from. The final point, sadly not my favorite point. There's an early recording of the song Sober from back in 1987 called Burn About Out, where Maynard performs with the children of the anachronistic dynasty that I previously mentioned. It's really cool to see where the song started, but I found this on some random guy's Facebook page. I'm sure it's somewhere on YouTube if you look hard enough. Well, that's the entire tool iceberg from top to the incredibly low bottom. I hope you learned something new about what I consider to be one of the greatest bands of all time. Let me know your favorite weird piece of knowledge you never needed to know. Subscribe if you enjoyed. And thanks for watching. Peace.